Okay, viewers, we're here at the very end of the fifth uh, page African Studies Conference. I'm with the organizer, Professor Taroshi. Yeah, can yes. you please um, introduce yourself to our viewers? Yes, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Istvan Taroshi, and I'm a social professor uh, at the University of Page, Department of Political Science and, and uh, International Relations. And uh, that department also hosts the sole Africa Research Center of the country. And um, actually, for 10 years, this Africa Research Center has been organizing this biannual international conference as well as has been publishing the only uh, journal, quarterly journal on African issues in Hungary. And this is the Hungarian Journal of African Studies. And many other field research has been conducted in the last couple of uh, uh, years. Mm -hmm. Many um, many scholars have mentioned uh, from the region here that there's a rise in interest in, in Africa, right? In, in, in Poland and in Czech Republic and Hungary as well. Yes. What do you think uh, drives this, this interest? Well, um, all these countries, after their political transformations, uh, uh, after, of course, the change of the political systems at the end of the 80s, um, tried to find new grounds for positioning themselves along national interests. So from a very geopolitical point of view, a very pragmatic foreign policy point of view, uh, they wanted to, and we wanted to, our countries wanted to find new alliances. One of the largest aspirations right after the political change was to get accession to the European Union as well as to have membership in NATO, for instance. Yeah. So all of us have achieved those memberships. And now, you know, the realities of the global scene uh, is quite obvious for, for all these countries as well to find uh, maybe redefine positions or new positions you know in the in the global global scene in terms of you know economic uh, collaborations uh, international trade you know cultural relations and so on and if you put this into context of the former immediate socialist past you will dig out quite soon connected with Africa former linkages that are revisited basically and re-emerging because of this very pragmatic new foreign policy approach. Uh, let's just move over there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Is it too? No, yeah. fine. Okay. Sorry. I, yes, I have to I have to finish this. Sorry. Sorry, two minutes, yeah. Okay, my next question then is um, uh, uh, the, the main themes, right, that are debated when it comes to Africa and Hungary, for instance, what, what are they? Yes, and not just in Hungary, but all across, actually, Central and Eastern Europe, especially the Visegrad 4, but particularly in Hungary, that is connected to the ongoing migration crisis. Uh, and because of that, there are so many issues uh, that are mentioned, but not all the aspects, not in its complexity, debated and discussed. So the public discourse at the moment is very much uh, basically one focused and that is, you know, refugees, migrants, uh, which we don't want, you know, in the country. But there are so many other dimensions as we know. And with this conference particular and with all the work we have been doing, we would like to open up minds, you know, and we would like to talk about all the other dimensions that characterize the African realities. And those African realities certainly influence what, what, what are re-engagements you know can be and you know how successful they can be let that be really connected with the national economic interests or or humanitarian you know projects there are so many hungarian ngos for instance doing a great job for many years for decades basically all across africa sub-saharan africa uh, you could hear during the conference a number of, of, of those you know projects uh, and i think you know Society at large really don't know about you know these 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 real tangible uh, presence of, for instance, Hungary uh, in Africa, and we would like to open up minds, you know, uh, uh, from that angle as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the, one of the specific things about this region, obviously, Eastern Europe, is that you had the socialist period, right? Yes. Does that in, and, and you had relationships with Africa oh, yeah. during the socialist time, yes. and you were there for a very particular socialist, uh, you know, political reasons, etc. So how how does this period in any way still uh, influence how you how your country sees or engages with Africa today yeah well, as, as, as I said you know it the engagement is basically re-engagement so that means revisiting rebuilding redefining uh, in a number of cases the former immediate past socialist linkages and for obvious reasons for very pragmatic reasons uh, to find a market niche you know to find some market position to have collaboration as now 
you know we are of course full members of the European Union because of that EU obligations EU you know uh, demands connections of course will also affect you know what Hungary will do for instance in you know in development assistance mm -hmm. uh, programs or humanitarian you know uh, assistance programs and but um, of course there are huge differences. So when revisiting, for instance, socialist linkages, uh, the methodology uh, in a number of cases is, is very different uh, now as being part of the European community. Mm. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, Africans would not wish to have the former methodologies themselves. So, of course, there are, there are changing uh, means and, 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 and tools and, and ways to, to, to re-engage with Africa. Mm -hmm. And final question then. Um, do you think there's a particular Eastern European take on African studies or a contribution that is already happening or might be happening in future? What do you think? I mean, is that yeah, I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally certain that in general, in general, the post-Soviet space and what the post-Soviet space can offer for its immediate past, for instance, you know, the socialist period and all the linkages with Africa during the socialist times, and 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 we should, you know talk about more and, 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 and get exposure to those, for instance, can per se give uh, you know, a contribution to the global understanding of, of African issues. And what we have been doing, and these are ongoing projects, for instance, uh, connected with migration and the global African diaspora, we have been writing about those Africans who came with a scholarship, let's say, in the 1970s and stayed in Hungary or went back home but kept a linkage with the Hungarian alma mater, the university, and you know the community with you know a partial Hungarian heart and so on, and what they can contribute to our present-day foreign policy in terms of revisiting these trade linkages, for instance. Yeah. So we have been writing about the neglected diaspora of the post-Soviet space recently. And also, I think, in terms of, uh, you know, um, the, the whole dynamics of European integration and the European project with all of us basically from the post-Soviet space um, having become members of the European community uh, with the new dynamics, you know, with the new uh, political cultures, uh, cultural heritage, of, of course, political traditions uh, should, be, should be, I mean, I think in depth more understood. And uh, you know, our task is to is to reveal those, and I think write even more about those. Okay, final question then: Does the the particular history of the region, uh, including the socialist era, does that um, bring about any critical position when it comes to EU policy in Africa, or how the West engages with Africa, etc.? Or is are you more or less following, you know, what Berlin, uh, London, you know, Paris, etc., etc., um, what, they, what, they, what they cook up there. So. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, yes, most of these countries have been following, uh, actually, the mainstream uh, EU, um, you know, paths uh, driven by France, you know, Germany and others. And because we don't really have a colonial past or colonizers past, yes, of course, you can dig into Austro-Hungarian monarchy and you will find some linkages, but not really having that experience as the, the former big colonizing nations had. Uh, we have been following what the EU has been doing, uh, which I personally think is not that good in a number of cases, uh, because we should, we should uh, look beyond the, the still, still today the former colonial practices. Uh, if you look at devel developmental assistance and so many other dimensions, you can still, you can still see, you know, those former colonial practices. Yeah. So we may bring, I think, um, in addition to this, we may bring in some some other cultural, uh, you know, uh, uh, socialization, you know, uh, uh, attitudes, you know, that may change at a certain point. May change, you know, the whole EU's view. But I'm 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 rather skeptical or rather critical on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm. Was that okay? <laughs>